This is a prequel to The Hunter and the Monkey. Before that unfortunate incident, the monkey was climbing a rope that goes around a tree branch and connects to a crate full of bananas or something. And the question is, how fast does the monkey have to accelerate himself up to lift the crate? Because then he can pull the crate up to himself. Um, two important points about this problem to get started is one is to keep in mind that this rope, as in most of the ropes and the problems we work on, is massless. Okay, so as the monkey pull, accelerates up, he is going to have to pull rope below him. So the weight of the rope below him does not add to his weight, or we don't have to consider it as a mass. The other thing is that there's no friction up here. We'll treat this as an ideal pulley. So the tree, it's like he's a Florian or something, where the trees are frictionless. But even with those simplifications, it's still a tricky problem to think about. So let's see, the monkey, we're going to call this mass of the monkey, just to make the equation simpler. But we know it's 10 kilograms. And this will be the mass of the crate is 15 kilograms. OK, well, I would start probably with free body diagrams. So let's draw one for the monkey. And that is mass of the monkey down <coughs> times g and tension up. The tension is constant, so when we draw the free body diagram for the crate, it's mass of the crate down and tension up. So the free body diagrams are actually pretty Simple in this case. You just have to think about what to do with them, because this is not a static problem. The monkey's accelerating up. Okay, so first let's uh, deal with the monkey. All right, so uh, the sum of the forces in the y is the mass of the acceleration in the y. And this is a little unusual because it's not like an Atwood machine where the monkey is simply attached to the rope and moving under gravity. The monkey is actually applying a force to the rope. So if you just brush through it and just do something simple, it's actually correct. You'll get the right answer. But let's think a little bit carefully about what, what's going on here. So let's think about the rope ending here, and then the monkey is kind of here. Let's say the monkey is attached to the end of the rope, and they apply forces to each other. So really, we should think in terms of action and reaction in this case. So let's find the action-reaction pair between the monkey and the rope. Well, one pulls on one, one pulls on the other. It's basically like this. If we just draw the rope by itself and think about the force on the rope, then what we would draw is sort of the force down, right? The monkey, that's the force of the monkey applies to the rope, the force of the monkey on the rope. We could also say, well, if we draw the monkey down here, he feels the force up. He pulls on the rope, and the rope is pulling up on him. That's the force of the rope on the monkey. So that's an action-reaction pair. It's an interaction between the, the rope and the monkey. But sometimes you can write it in a way where you just label it like this. It's the force of the monkey on the rope and the rope on the monkey. But those are equal to other expressions you can write. Okay. So the force that the rope applies to the monkey up is the tension. Right? That's what a rope does. And you attach it to something. It pulls with its tension. So we realize that's just T. Right? And then what about the monkey is pulling on the rope? What's contributing to that? Well, his weight, mmg. But if he just lets his weight be supported, he won't accelerate up. So he's also pulling like with his muscles. He's pulling down. So it's mmg plus, I was going to call it F pull, FP. Okay. So that's really everything happening in that case. So it's a little weird to think of the monkey attached to the rope but the static object it's not. He's actually kind of pulling. But if you imagine him always on the end, it kind of looks like this, even though really it's going through his hands. We're ignoring the mass of what's below his hand. So it's kind of like this situation. And there's your action reaction, and there's how to use it. OK, now given all that, now we're concerned because we think, oh, we've got to deal with a pull force now. But you don't, because we apply F equals MA to the monkey. And that pull force is just part of the tension. So the tension is all we really care about. So the sum of the forces in the y is the tension up. There it is, minus mass of the monkey down. And that's equal to the mass of the monkey times the acceleration that we're looking for. So if you didn't think of the whole Newton's third law action reaction, and you just said, oh, well, it's this, we'll get it right. It's right, but it's interesting to think about the detailed action-reaction there. 
Um, so then we can just say, well, the tension um, is equal to the mass of the monkey times acceleration plus gravity. So now let's think about the crate. Let's see. Well, the crate's on the ground, and this is one of a problem where it says, sort of, what's the minimum force, or what force does it take to do something? So whenever you see that, that's when you got to think, what are they really asking? So when it's just sitting on the ground, um, there would be a normal force here. And so you've got uh, mass times gravity, mass of the crate times gravity pulling it down, tension maybe pulling up if the monkey's pulling on it, and the normal force, what would it be? It'll just be whatever it takes. Right? The magnitude of the normal force is whatever it takes. Whatever normal force you need to make everything come out right. So when the things on the ground come out right means it's not accelerating. So the sum of the forces is zero. So tension plus normal plus minus mg, mg should equal zero. But the question is, what does it take to lift the crate? And that basically means um, when does the sum of the forces in the y become greater than zero? So we don't really care about the acceleration of the crate. We just care about the forces it takes to start it accelerating. So as soon as that's greater than zero, say, okay, then I'll just say tension T minus M2G is greater than zero. What about that normal force we talked about? Well, the normal is pushing up, but if you think about what happens, as you pull up harder and harder with the tension, the normal force is driven to zero. All right, so at some tensions, there's a normal force there. But as you pull harder, tension harder, harder, this happens when this actually goes to zero. It's the normal force that makes up for the force it needs to keep it on the ground, but eventually the normal force isn't going to do anything if you're not touching the ground anymore. So that's why we write it that way. So tension minus m uh, crate, sorry, m crate g um, is greater than zero. So tension, we plug this in, mass of the monkey times acceleration plus g minus mass of the crate times g has to be greater than zero. And now we just plug in and get numbers. Right, so the mass of the monkey is 10. The acceleration will be 1 plus 9.8 minus mass of the crate is 15 times 9.8 plus be greater than zero. And you can kind of see that it's 10 times gravity minus 5 times gravity is negative 5 times gravity over here is 5 times gravity 9.8. 10 times acceleration, so it's uh, you know a half of g. So the acceleration has to be greater than uh, 4.9 meters per second squared. So both of these steps you can actually get real quickly if you just sort of look at these diagrams and solve them. But there is a subtlety in each one. 